So if you've ever tried to do any scraping on the internet, you have no doubt run across Appify. And despite all of the great things that it can do, it is incredibly cumbersome for anyone who is not tech savvy. So if you're trying to do it yourself, it makes it almost impossible. But there's a new website that just got launched, a new product called uh, cr scrapecreators.com. And I've been playing around with this thing and it's really cool. And I want to show you a few use cases for it and you can decide whether or not it's for you or not, because it really is for what it does. It does an exceptional job of it, but it only works in certain use cases. So if those are you, you're going to really enjoy this episode. I'm going to show you a couple of examples, but first let me get logged in. Okay. So now that we're logged in, you can see a few things on the first, the overview page. First is your API key. And once you've got, I haven't paid anything for this yet. I've just been testing it out. I have 92. To, they give you a hundred credits and it looks like from the work I've been doing that doing any sort of scrape of about 50, uh, 50 items costs about two credits. So I'm not sure if you were doing a lot of it, if it's, uh, but the credit system itself in terms of what it costs to buy more is pretty cheap. It's 5,000 credits for 10 bucks, 25,000 for $40 for $47. So I think if you're experimenting with this coming in and just getting the hundred free credits is going to be fine. Now, they have a playground in here. I'm not going to take you in there because if you're watching this, it's because Appify freaks you out and you're struggling to sort of figure out how to make that work and you want a simpler option. The playground is very good if you're a developer. It's not great if you're not. So what I decided to do was to go into something like N8N, which is much more user-friendly for those of us who are not developers, coders by trade, uh, so that you can kind of see the process and how it works and also kind of visualize what's possible. So I've got three different use cases here. And the first one is a YouTuber or YouTube competitor insights. So if you have a YouTube channel, you're using it for your business, you're trying to grow, and you know that you have other people in your industry, in your space who have successful channels, one of the things would be really nice is if you could go scrape that channel and look at all of their videos for say the last three or four months and do an analysis of those and sort of split out which ones have gotten the most views and what compare it to the titles and do some, some, some data mining to try and figure out, okay, what are people in my industry really watching right now? What sort of titles and contents resonating? That's the idea. Well, if we come in here, you'll see that in N8N, um, we actually have a scrapes creator tool. And if I just open this up, you can see all of the different things. We have Facebook actions where you can get a profile, um, where you can get uh, Facebook group posts. You can get Facebook ads, which we'll talk about in a minute and search for ads in your industry that are currently running successfully. So you can get an idea and maybe, maybe even copy what they're doing if they're doing a good job. We've got the Google ads library. We've got Google search all the Instagram stuff, LinkedIn actions, the LinkedIn ads library. It just goes on and on. They've got Pinterest, they've got TikTok, they've got Reddit. It's just for social media, and this is what I'm saying, for social media, this is a game changer because I'm not even going to go into how I had to use, to, how I used to do this to try and scrape this stuff, but this is a hundred times easier than the way it used to be. So here, what I've got, and again, this isn't an N8N tutorial. I just want to give you conceptually an idea of what you can do with this information. So I'm using here the Get YouTube Channel videos, and I have this guy, Ed Lawrence, who I follow on YouTube. He talks about YouTube stuff a lot and how business owners can use YouTube to grow their channels. If you are into that, this guy's good. Like I've been doing marketing online for 18 years. And there's a lot of stuff on YouTube that's just garbage. This guy's really good. So if you don't follow him and you're a business owner, especially service-based business owner using YouTube, go check him out. But he talks a lot about the process of getting people to transfer from YouTube onto uh, other platforms. And so I thought, well, let's use him as the example for this because I know his stuff's good and I like him. So the first thing we do, if I just open up this first node, is I just I connect my account. We go to YouTube, we get the channel of videos. I give the handle of the YouTube channel, which is Ed Lawrence. That's uh, his handles like uh, right here. Okay. And then I have to go look for his channel ID. Now, how do you find his channel ID? I'll just let you know, cause it took me half a minute to figure this out. You actually have to come to his channel. You right click, you go view page source. And then you hit command find on your Mac and you look for forward slash channel. 
and it'll drag you to forward slash, slash channel and all the stuff after that, that's his channel ID. Okay. So I come and I take that, I drop it back into there and then it asks me how many I want. It defaults to 50. Just start out with 50. If you, I, I don't know how many you could technically run, maybe thousands, uh, as long as you've got the credits. And then it pulls in all of this information into a table. But the problem is we kind of need to split this information out because now we've got all the information, but we want it done video by video. So all I did was I added a little split note here and I took each video and I split it out by video. And that gives me, again, if I look here on the left, each table now has videos, uh, video viewer count, that, is, that information in there. Okay. So I'm including videos and the video view count because those are the two things that I'm interested in. Okay. Then I do a little bit more filtering here where I say, I only want his videos that have over 35,000 views. Now that's because his channel is pretty large and over 35,000 views would be slightly above average for his total view count. Okay. Or his average view count. So now I'm just going to filter out all the ones that are not as successful. Again, we're trying to figure out, we're trying to figure out how to um, learn from other people in our industry who are having success in the area we want to have success in. And then we've got insert rows. Now, the cool thing, I haven't shown you guys this before. I'm sure you, you may have seen it if you're an N8N person. Previously, if we wanted to put things into spreadsheets, we had to use something like Google Sheets or Airtable. Uh, but N8N's done a really cool thing here, which is to create their own tables. So now, if I pass all of that information, that filtered information into this Google, this, I'm sorry, N8N table, it comes out looking something like this, which is cool. I've got the title, I've got the number of views, I've got the URL so I can go watch the video. And I even have the average duration of the video, which, or the actual duration of the video, which is nice to have if you're thinking about trying to find commonalities between title, total number of views, um, and, uh, time and video duration. So you might be able to ask AI and AI agent to do something like, Hey, go look at all these videos and see if there's any correlation between the view count and the average and the length of the video. And you may find that, Hey, if videos under 20 minutes tend to perform really well, while videos over an hour long perform poorly or vice versa, but this gives you the data. And the nice thing about what they've done with these tables is it stays inside of N8N. So I don't have to call out to Google Sheets and then call back in and risk something breaking in my workflow. I can just keep everything kind of all inside of N8N. But that's the first stop, the first thing that we can do with this. What's another thing? Okay, so at this point, you may be feeling a little overwhelmed at the realization that this whole AI agent thing isn't quite as easy as you thought it would be. Well, I got some good news for you. It can be. You see, the engineering team at Motion has spent years designing the most useful work tool for the 21st century, and they already have AI agents, exactly like the one I'm showing you, built directly into their platform that their engineering team can customize to fit your company's unique needs. So if you want a simple and friction-free way to add AI agents to your business, click on the link in the description for a free trial to test Motion out for yourself. And for everyone else, Let's get back to the episode. The second one is, hey, let's do a LinkedIn profile scrape. And the rationale for this would be, let's say we're doing cold email and we want to give a personalized message at the beginning of that email to that person to try and make it seem more, I guess, like it's more casual, like it's coming from a friend. Well, the way we used to do this was we would give all the LinkedIn profiles to the AI agent and we would say, okay, now go out, do research, do a web search, look at their LinkedIn, see if you can read their posts and then try and find some information about them that we can then use to create a cold opener or an icebreaker. Well, now we can go directly to LinkedIn. And in this case, I just pulled my own profile because I figured I didn't really want to pull anybody else's. And um, we get all this information back that's really valuable to us in terms of, that we can break out and we can use. And so what I did was I did exactly the same thing. So all I do is I split out the information and I just say, hey, I want to look at, at my activity. So I want to look at things I liked, the things I shared, the things I wrote, um, all the articles, everything like that. I want to see what that is. So. I come in, I drag the activity over, and now all I'm doing is pulling the activity events from my profile. 
Then I do a little bit more filtering here. And then I use what's called uh, SEO. This is called SEO data. Yeah, SEO uh, data for SEO. Um, this is a fantastic program. They gave me a bunch of free credits. I still haven't burned through them even though I use it all the time. Um, really, really nice feature. But what it does is it takes the URL. So I get the title here. I get a little bit of information, but I get a link to the actual post. And what I, I say is I say, hey, I want you to take this link from this post and I want you to pull out the data that's in there. I want you to parse the data for me. And then I want you to take that data and I just want you to put a few things into a Google Sheet for me. So I want you to put the content I want you to put the image link and I want you to put the post link in there. And so then again, we could have done this in a ta in an innate in table, but instead I did it in a uh, Google Sheets table just so you can see the difference. And if I come in here and look, you'll see here's all of my content that's for the last four pieces of content. So you could like run this every day and pull all the latest content from what the person's been posting about or the four most recent. Uh, you could do the same thing when you're developing your cold email is just come in here and say, hey, read through these, get an idea, and then use it in your cold email opener. And as you can see, we have the link to the actual post. If we want to go look at it, you can see there's the post itself. And then we also, if we come down, we can also look at the image. Well, if I can get it to open, there it is. That's the artificial, the AI image that I had generated for that post. And so this can, you can either use this, as I said, um, to go in and manually look and sort of see what other your competitors are doing, or what we could do at the end of this is then just feed this into an AI agent and have it start doing some other work or some other uh, data mining or interpolation, whatever we want, okay? The last one is the Facebook ad scraper. So let's say that, you're running ads on Facebook. You want to see what com your competitors are doing, what kind of successful ads they have, and maybe you can look to model some of your ads or test some of your copy and your advertising um, against some of what we would consider to be um, uh, kind of like the step, what's working now, the standard, right? There's a term for it in copywriting, and of course now it just completely escapes my mind. The control piece, okay? So anytime you're running ads, typically, you've got one control piece and that's the one that has performed the best. And you're constantly testing new ads to see what's going to perform better than the control piece. And once you find one that does, that becomes the new control piece. Okay. So what we've done in here is we've just gone into Facebook ads library. We've searched ads and I've queried investment advisor. And then I said, I only want countries and I don't, I only want ads from people in the U S I only want ads that are currently running. And then last, I only want ads that have been running for more than a month. Now, why is that important? Well, if the ad's been running more than a month, there's a pretty good chance it's working because nobody in their right mind would pay Facebook uh, month after month for ads that weren't converting. So if we look and we pull just the ads that are converting, then there's a high likelihood that those are going to be good ads. Then we do the same split out that we've done this, uh, the other two times. We just pull in the actual search results. And then we pass that into this data sheet here and we get all that information. And if we come back to the little uh, test spreadsheet I've got, now you'll notice this isn't, it doesn't look good, right? You need to do some formatting and some things if you were actually, if a human was gonna go through this and start looking at stuff. Um, but it's great if all you're doing is passing that information then onto an AI agent. And so you can see, here's the law firm, um, here's the link to the URL. Here's the image URL. So if they did actually have an image that they were using, you can see what that looks like. Clearly pretty AI generated image here. Um, but that's the idea is that you can then take this data in and you don't have to go through the process of copying the code and putting the code into an HTTP request or the Appify node and making sure that all that's set up correctly. It's just literally plug it in and it works. Now, where does this not tend to work well? Well, if you're doing it, if you know where you're going, so if I have a list of LinkedIn profiles that I want to scrape and look at, or I have a list of competitors and their names, and I want to run, uh, I want to pull all their ads, it works really well. What they don't have right now is a way for you to go and scrape say potential LinkedIn profiles of people that you would want to connect with. Let's say you're a company that's using something like Clay 
to go out and find potential prospects, do some analyzing for you, and they're going out and they're you know searching all over to sort of pull in that data. Well, it doesn't have any feature right now where it will let you go in and actually search for say, Facebook profiles for people in this industry who are CEOs. I had a client the other day who was trying to figure out how to pull in business owners who were um, over the age of 55 with company with company size of more than 10 employees, I think it was. And what he was trying to do was um, reach out to them and see if they were interested in selling their business, okay? There's no way for you to do that with Scrape Creators right now. Uh, maybe that'll come in the future. But if what you're trying to do is get content, get information about people who are creating content online, marketing and sales, that sort of stuff, this is a game changer. Absolutely phenomenal. And like I said, if you've got a little bit of smarts, you can go into their playground. Like I said, they have this. I won't show it to you because I'll have to blur my API keys and it'll take me four hours to edit this video. Um, so if you're a developer or somebody who understands that, it is a pretty robust little playground and pretty easy to navigate. Um, but it's I only show you it in N8N because visually I think it's easier to understand. So um, go and check it out. Give it a try. Let me know what you think in the comments. Appreciate it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will talk to you soon.